or momentum and impulse. I really like this picture here. Why science teachers should not be given playground duty. You ever seen those little sort of the metal uh, spheres? You know, so they go like bang, bang, bang. That has to do with conservation of momentum. Uh, <laughs> that would be awesome if you did that. I don't know why I laugh at that. Maybe I have kids. I could just imagine that. They'd be laughing their butts off, that's for sure. So we have something called momentum. And it seems like a really strange thing. I mean, we understand mass, I think, right? Most people get mass. Uh, and mass is something that's measured in kilograms. I'll put the units here. And velocity is measured in meters per second. That's something we can measure. Now, a lot of people think, why do we have momentum? Well, it turns out momentum is a really weird uh, sounding thing, uh, but it's really useful. First of all, the equation for momentum goes like this, P equals MV. That's the equation you get. This is the vector and that's a vector. Super important. Um, and yet a lot of people think it's really strange. So what I mean by that is, that, I mean, this is in your data booklet, by the way. So this thing called momentum, let's look at the units for it, by the way. You don't have to memorize them. Let's look. Momentum is, let's see, what's mass measured in again? Oh, yeah, kilograms. So that's why it's measured in kilograms. And then uh, velocity, which is meters per second. So that's why it's a kilogram meters per second. That's the units for momentum. Seems like a strange thing, like an arbitrary thing. But it turns out in a lot of times in, in physics, uh, or even in general science, what you're trying to do is you're trying to find some quantities that are conserved. And when I say conserved, I mean same before as after. Now, mass is often conserved, but not quite, right? It turns uh, out, you know, E equals mc squared. Mass goes missing and gets turned into energy and weird stuff there. Velocity isn't necessarily conserved from before to after. Somebody figured out that if you multiply mass and velocity, just that product of mass and velocity, that thing we call momentum, that thing that's kind of arbitrary, that is conserved. So that's what we use. That's the reason why it's a useful unit, okay? Because momentum itself by it on its own doesn't really mean much to us. It's a product of mass and velocity. Yeah, so what? Well, the reason why it's important is because of this idea here that it's conserved, which means the momentum before, like the total momentum before, will equal the total momentum after. And you use this to make predictions. You can use this to solve all sorts of crazy problems. So this is the main idea behind momentum conservation. So uh, I'm gonna give you an example here. I just went skiing recently, so that's why I was thinking about this. But I mean, it's uh, very much set up like an IB question. I just changed the skier and snowboarder, but I mean, the idea is an IB idea here. They definitely do this. Um, so let's just split everything. I like to split the question into two here. So we have a skier, mass of the skier is 55 kilograms and they run into a snowboarder of 70 kilograms. They have an inelastic collision. Do you know what inelastic means? Inelastic means they don't bounce. In other words, they stick together. Okay, they stick together. That's the important thing here. Inelastic means they stick together. Now, what's their final velocity after the collision, assuming no friction? And we're given that the skier, remember S means skier, is 20 meters per second east, and we have the snowboarder going 30 meters per second west. So I think maybe it helps to draw uh, something here. So let's just try to draw this. I'm not a good artist, so I'm just going to say this is going to be the skier. And it's going to be M skier is 55 kilograms. And I have V skier is, what was it again? It was 20. So 20 meters per second. And I'll draw east being that way, just to the right. Uh, now I'm gonna draw the snowboarder. This is the snowboarder over here. They're going to the left, by the way. We're gonna say the mass of the snowboarder is 70 kilograms. I'm just lining everything up just, so it's gonna be a lot easier to deal with. Uh, and the velocity of the snowboarder is 30 meters per second. Now, what's really important then is, again, if you want to figure out what happens, I mean, in the end here, they stick together. We have this person and we have the skier here. Right? They're stuck together somehow. So maybe they're sort of tangled and they're angry with each other. Uh, now, we don't know what necessarily which direction they're going to be going. We're going to have to figure that out. But um, we want to know their final velocity. And a good way to do that is, again, to calculate what is the thing that's conserved. And obviously, you should know it since it's a video about momentum. Duh, he's probably going to use a momentum example. But this is an example where we need momentum. So let's uh, actually find it here. So I'll try to solve for momentum here. I'll say, um, I'll do them in the same colors, maybe. So I have momentum of the skier. Well, the momentum is just mass times velocity. So it's just 55 times 20. Uh, so that's 100, no, 110 with an extra zero there, kilogram 
meters per second, and that is in the direction of the travel, so that's that way. But now we also have the P of the snowboarder, the momentum of the snowboarder. Let's figure that out. That is uh, 70 times 30, which is 21 with two extra zeros. Uh, so this is this number here, have I done? yeah, kilogram meters per second. But this is that way, it's left. Now, it helps to figure out what's the total momentum then. Total momentum, I'll see P total. It's just gonna be the momentum of the snowboarder plus the momentum of the skier. In this case, then I have to do 2100 and 1100, and they're opposite directions. So I know the one that's gonna win is a snowboarder. So 2100 minus 1100, that's gonna give me 1000. So what I'm gonna do then with that number 1000, I have to keep in mind which direction it is. So that gives me a direction to the left. And this is the only thing that's allowed to cross that line. What I mean by that line, that line is gonna define before the collision and after the collision. So that way, the only thing that can cross this line, the only thing that's useful, the only thing that's conserved is this total momentum. So now I know that this total momentum is also equal to this same number right here. So now I know that. So maybe I'll write in a totally different color now. Now I know then that P total is equal to 1,000 here as well. I even know the direction. It's to the left or west, sorry, west. Um, so what happens here? Well, they're both stuck together. Well, now I know they're both going that way. And what I can do is figure out, well, I know the momentum equals the mass times the velocity, but I know that they're together, so it's gonna be m1 plus m2. So in other words, it's gonna be um, 55 plus 70, all that times um, the final velocity, which I don't know. Remember, I, I'm actually trying to find that. So I'm gonna actually take a look at that and uh, try to do it all here. I can actually uh, put in for pt here, I've got a thousand. So that's going to equal, because uh, that's my total uh, momentum. I know that 1,000 uh, equals this plus this times V. So that means that 1,000 divided by 55 plus 70, uh, that's going to equal V. So I'm going to get out my trusty calculator here and see if I can solve this. So I've got uh, 55, what do I have to do? I have to do 1,000 over, what is that, 125. I end up with 8. So my velocity then is 8 meters per second, and it's left. So in other words, it's west. That's what's gonna happen. That's gonna be the total velocity, or sorry, the velocity of both of them together. So that's how you can use this to solve things.